Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. It is Wednesday, April 20th and I am just now back home from the first annual Bright Line Eating family reunion and it took my breath away. I, um, I had some expectations, I had some hopes, I had some fears and it was better than I could have possibly imagined. It just was so great to be with everybody. Oh my goodness, there were a couple hundred people there, I think 230 altogether. And I know that of the thousands of people watching this vlog today, most of you weren't there. So I just want you to know that we thought of you, we missed you, I missed you, and we held you there in our hearts. And I also want you to know that my team and I are very, very busy right now, very busy putting together a series of webinars that are going to bring as much of that family reunion to you as possible. So watch your email over the next few days. I think you're gonna get the first email about the first webinar in just maybe four or five days. So watch your email closely um, because we know that some of you couldn't make it and it broke your heart that you couldn't be there and we're gonna bring as much of it to you as we can. So that said, Today in the vlog, I wanna talk about something called post-event collapse syndrome, um, and more informally in Bright Line Eating called re-entry. So I have already gotten the message about three different people who've had binges since the Bright Line Eating family reunion. And it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's not um, something I love. Of course, I would want no one ever to have a binge ever, uh, but after an event that was amazing as that one was, where we were in sort of a cocoon of love for three and a half days, completely surrounded by like-minded, open-hearted, concerned, attentive, loving, beautiful people, and we were going deep and sharing stories and exploring and shoring up our bright lines and doing all this great work, then to leave that environment and come home and experience an intense day of travel followed by being dumped back into a world that is not um, ship shape. So there's emails that haven't been answered for days, there's laundry that needs to be done, the fridge is empty and you need groceries, and you know now you gotta kinda let go of the excitement and the, the big workshop high, you know, that amazing feeling, and like, oh, now it's back to life as usual. It's kind of an interesting thing. Most people don't realize this or think about it that, that way, this way. But after the big event, after the big holiday, after the big trip, is actually when most people struggle with their bright lines, not during. You'd think that during the holiday, during the trip, you'd struggle with your bright lines. And some people do because, you know, usually there are food challenges associated with that. But it's actually coming home that, that poses the biggest risk, re-entry. And so some of what I did um, on Monday, which was my big re-entry day, my husband and I took a red-eye flight on Sunday night, landed in Rochester, New York at 9 a.m. on Monday morning, and I had the day to gradually, slowly, in my jet-lagged, sleep-deprived state, do laundry, get to the grocery store, settle in. Now, I did happen to arrive home on Monday morning to a daughter, Zoe, who'd been vomiting um, four or five times that morning already. I think five times she vomited on Monday morning. So it wasn't quite the relaxing day of re-entry that I hoped it would be. She's doing much better now, thank goodness. Um, Alexis and Maya were fine. They were at school on Monday. So anyway, um, I, I just wanted to just say that I planned a day on Monday where I could gradually um, get reintroduced to my life, just knowing that historically I've done a lot of travel and re-entry is the hardest piece. And you know, it's just, it's just a simple thing of stress and support. You know, here's your stress, your support's gotta be up here, but when you're coming home, all of a sudden there's all this extra stress because of all the laundry and the email and the groceries and all that. And um, you know, all of a sudden from your workshop not being there anymore, your support feels like it's down here. So it's just a temporary place of everything feeling out of whack for a little bit. So 
Anyway, everyone else who's traveling home from the family reunion, I, I hope that you took and are taking a little bit of time to have a gentle re-entry. Um, so there's one other thing that's on my mind today for this vlog, um, which is that, I don't know uh, if you've heard this story, but um, the Food Revolution Summit is coming up. It's late April right now, and the Food Revolution Summit starts in late April, so it's right around the corner. And this is the Food Revolution Summit of 2016. Now, the story is that last year for the Food Revolution Summit of 2015, a few months before the summit, I sent Ocean Robbins, who didn't know me then, an email saying, hey, I introduced myself a little bit. He knew of me a little bit. Um, I had introduced myself before. But I introduced myself and I said, I would love to speak on your summit. And this was last year. And he wrote me back a very kind, but rather dismissive email saying, essentially, thanks for offering. We actually are trying already right now to pull a list of 21 speakers out of a, a possible array of 125 people that are already on our radar screen. And so basically, it's not happening. <laughs> um, probably not. Thanks, thanks for offering, though. And um, so, you know, that, that was what it was. I was disappointed not to, not to get consideration, not to get to speak. And then what happened was during the summit itself last year, our Bright Line Eating Tribe, which last year was 6,000 people, our little tribe of 6,000 was more engaged in the Food Revolution Summit and watched more videos and purchased more empowerment packages at the end of the summit than other people who had tribes of, um, other tribes of 100,000. We were 6,000 and they were 100,000 and our little tribe of 6,000 had more engaged people. And Ocean Robbins saw that because he's looking at the statistics on his you know, console and he was like, who is Susan Pierce Thompson really? And, and, and who are her followers and the Bright Line Eating Tribe, why are they so engaged in the quest to be healthy around their food? And, and they're so interested in this information and why are they tuning in so passionately? And that's when he reached out to me and the sort of the rest is history. If, you're, if you've been around Bright Line Eating for a while, you know that Ocean Robbins and I now have a very deep and abiding friendship and a deep partnership. Um, and in fact, we do, um, we're going to do the second annual now launch together um, of the, of the boot camp in September. We're going to do a big launch together again, like we did last year. Um, and anyway, this year I get to be a speaker on the Food Revolution Summit. I have been invited and um, I get even sort of a preferred spot, like they've, they're featuring me in one of the the, I think it's like a special day or whatever. I forget what it is, but he told me that there's like good placement of, of my interview. And um, I hope you'll sign up for it. I'm super excited. I've looked at the lineup. I just spent a few minutes before recording this vlog studying the lineup and just being um, awed really by the caliber of people who are speaking in the summit. And, and I cannot wait to hear their interviews, all of these really amazing doctors and scientists and activists and um, people whose names I recognize. I'm sure you'll recognize a lot of them as well. So go ahead and click down here if you want to know who the other speakers are. Go ahead and register for the summit. This year our tribe is 162,000. Last year it was 6,000. This year it's 162,000. And I anticipate that we will once again have a disproportionately active, engaged, thrilled um, group of people following the summit. I'll be following it. I hope you'll be with me. I plan to watch and uh, quickly send out to you some of my reflections on some of the more powerful talks so that you can make sure to catch them before the 24-hour um, time elapses. The, the interviews are available for free online for 24 hours after they air. So I'll be sure to sort of tip you off. Oh, make sure not to miss this one if I have real favorites. And um, anyway, so go ahead, click down there, register, and um, yeah, and here on Wednesday, April 20th, 2016, right after the big um, Bright Line Eating family reunion, I'm thinking about re-entry. I'm thinking about keeping our Bright Lines bright. My Bright Lines are feeling really bright at the moment, and I'm feeling really happy, thin, and free, and very grateful for you. Very, very grateful for you. So that's the weekly vlog. 
And if you have a question or a topic you'd like me to address in the weekly vlog, go ahead and send it in. I'm a little behind right now. I think I have um, a document of like 55 pages of suggestions, but you still can send it in because sometimes recent ones um, are really timely. And, um, and sometimes I just sort of skip the queue and answer those. So anyway, go ahead and send it in. I'm at Susan at BrightlineEating.com and I'll see you next week.